this is an overview of curves and surfaces in rhinoceros in rhino <laughs> um, so you see there's various types of curves between first degree or straight curves with sharp corners <clears throat> and multi degree curves uh, which we'll get into in a second surfaces there are only surfaces there is no such thing as a <clears throat> actual solid in rhino um, the closest thing to a solid is a closed or watertight polysurface so if I explode this, it will reduce it to its elements. That is the closest thing in Rhino to a solid, is a watertight polysurface. Um, so, starting with curves, there's various ways to make curves. Uh, line, the line command. Um, and you'll see that when you click a command, you have these options down at the bottom sort of helpers that I encourage you that anytime you do any option really in Rhino especially towards the beginning pay attention to the command line while the function is operational and you'll see very useful native tools so there are other ways to make a vertical line but um, they're sort of standard out-of-the-box helpers so if you click that and you'll see different types normal to a surface bisected lines explore these um, <clears throat> as you move in any option in Rhino so polylines are basically a chain of lines if I explode them they're no different than a single line and if I join multiple lines like if I use the line command and make several and join this it is just a polyline. So I don't typically use the line command that much. I use polyline and if I need to access individual lines I'll hit explode. Um, when you have a, a element selected hitting F10 you see the command line there turns points on. It allows you to grab individual points and manipulate them and if it's a, um, <clears throat> a degreed curve smooth curve you'll have access to control points so you'll see polyline by default makes a chain of one degree curves and then we'll go to for example the control point curve and I'll actually trace this line what it's doing is using a control point and then creating a line among those control points so if I hit F10 you'll see that the control points of this line match exactly that polyline. So this approximation, this idea of a degree curve becomes important. <clears throat> a curve's degree, I'll delete this and make a new one. So there are the control points and then there is the control through points, curve through points. Or IC, this is interpret curve. I set up that quick key for IC, so if you haven't set that up, interpret curve is the command and this will make a curve through the points that you're clicking so you know that your curve is passing through those points and the control points for those curves are something very different they're what's necessary to to basically hit those points as you create the curve so hitting F10 again the control points of the curve this idea of of curvature degree so any curve um, or surface actually rebuild is a typical command or a typical a common command it shows you in parentheses the current status so this curve has one two three four five six points and it is a one degree curve so these are the straight lines and I'll the preview is showing what it will become if I go ahead with these options so a degree curve by rebuilding this into let's say six points and a third degree curve is <clears throat> turning that into a smooth curve the degree of curvature means that this is was a third degree curve if I manipulate this point it will affect the curve up to this point the next point and then the third point it locks in so this curve will not be edited beyond the bounds of that point. So if I drag this, you'll see that um, the curve sort of peels away from the original curve 
but is not affected beyond. Let's see if I can. Can't really print screen it, but you'll see that, that above this curve here, there's sort of no more um, distortion to the curve. So the idea of a curved degree means how many control points out it is affected. A second degree curve. If I were to rebuild this into a second degree curve with six points. Okay. Um, means that if I adjust this, you've got one, two, um, and beyond the second point, it is not affected. That's curvature, curved degree. <clears throat> So uh, I'll create a polyline, clicking. Um, I have ortho on. You'll see that it's without clicking anything else. I'm making right angles. I leave ortho on by holding shift. It will let you break that right angle, um, the orth orthographic constraint. Um, you can That's your preference. You can leave that off and hold shift to snap to ortho. I just tend to find the orthographic constraint uh, more useful on and break it when I want to. Holding tab, or hit, I'm sorry, hitting tab, will, whatever direction you're in, if you hit tab, it maintains that direction. See the line turned white? My mouse is over here, but it's constraining the line to that direction. This is a very useful tool. Um, you'll see when I snap, it's perpendicular to that line. Um, so if I'm moving this direction, and you'll see if you if these get annoying, these sort of object snaps, you can turn off Smart Track, and it won't try to do that anymore. And at any point down here, if you don't want snaps on, you can turn off O Snap, and then Object Snap, and then you have freedom to get close to something without it overriding. Um, so if you drag the line and hit tab. It's going to lock it in that direction <clears throat> and I'm going to snap to that point. So you'll find many uses for tab. It's uh, very handy sort of functionality of Rhino. If I create a line and hit control before I click, you'll see that it now is has that white sort of constraint, direction constraint. This means it's going perpendicular to the construction plane. So this grid, you'll see that I now have a line that's elevated um, in space. And at any point on these lines, I can type in an, a, a, um, a distance. So you'll see here, I'm moving here, that's about 5 inches. If I want to lock that into 5 inches, I can then change the direction and know that it's going to be five inches. Um, and same goes for if I hit control and snap on that point again, it's locking it down in that direction. So I have now made a line vertical. Um, so I'm sort of freely making lines in and out of the construction plane. So moving here, click, control click, hit point, and I've now made a sort of circulation path or something that goes in and out of the plane of control. So I tend you this is something that you can do by um, sort of working through different view planes. Um, as you do a command, you can sort of navigate freely through the different viewports. I just tend to stay in perspective and um, like to sort of get used to moving in and out sort of three dimensions within this uh, <clears throat> within this viewport. So polylines, um, curves, or they're all curves, but um, sort of a degreed curve. And then there is the interpret curve or curve through points. There's many other curves types, um, and I encourage you to explore those. So this meaning it goes through that point. Um, so they're curves.
the next logical step is to make surfaces with curves. Um, there are several ways to make surfaces. The most accessible or sort of common is extrude. So that will bring the line um, in that direction. Now I have again options down here. I can hit direction and say I want it to go from this point in that direction and now I've got a curve extruded in that direction. There's various other um, options such as <clears throat> direction both sides meaning it will go in both directions of the curve. Uh, solid which we'll get to in a second. Um, if this were a closed curve, we'll get to it now. If this were a closed curve, uh, a circle for example, and I extrude this, this idea of a solid means does it cap the ends. Um, so there's open, no solid, and then if I were to do this and hit again underscore S, um, hit solid, and you have a capped extrusion. So extrude is a common um, method for making surfaces. Another common method is the planar surface. So if you have um, curves within a single plane, selecting them and hitting planar surface will create a planar surface with those trimmed out. It is exactly the same process of hitting planar surface here and selecting this curve and trimming out the inside. Um, so again, that's a common way of making a surface, planar surface. If I turn on the control points here and lift this out of plane and now select these and type planar surface, it will no longer understand that it's trimming out or making a planar surface of that of those selected curves. If a curve is out of plane, it can't make a planar surface. There are other commands to make surfaces, such as edge surface, where you select four edges that have to explode this edge surface, and it will make up to four segments or four curves. <clears throat> but the planar surface command has to be within plane the curves selected have to be within plane and they have to be closed. I can't make a planar surface of an opened curve. Typing close curve then I can make a planar surface. So other types <coughs> of so we've got planar surface and extrude. Um, I'll make these so I've got planar surface, we have extrude. Now we'll do what's called a loft. So a lofted surface means, so I'm, I'm again holding control to move sort of in and out of plane, um, and I'll use the interpret curve to a little bit more control over that and I'll make one more curve. So a lofted surface, if I select as many curves as you'd like, I'm doing three in this case, I type loft, you see that it is lofting a surface around these curves or through these curves. Um, you have some options to not simplify, which means hold it very tight, or rebuild it. Again, this is sort of in encapsulating the rebuild command to how many control points, sort of the, the um, accuracy you'd like. You have options to say loose, you don't really care how closely it approximates it, tight, um, straight sections, meaning it's creating a poly surface through this, so if I have do not simplify straight sections, it is basically creating a loft between these two curves, 
and then between these two curves and creating a poly surface. If you don't have straight sections or leave it as normal preview, it is going through those and creating one surface. So experiment with the different types um, of options there. There are many benefits to having them as separate curves or as or as separate surfaces or as a single surface. So you'll see there I picked straight sections. Um, this has basically created two surfaces which I can explode into their individual components. This um, normal setting, so when I hit loft and I have it set to normal. In preview, you'll see that it creates a single surface. You can't explode this. This is uh, one surface, whereas the straight sections <coughs> is the equivalent of making a loft between those curves and then between these curves. So there's always multiple ways to do something. Um, and you want to experiment with the different options when creating something so you understand uh, sort of the fastest way uh, to, if you have a chain of curves, you obviously don't want to lock between each individual one. If you want them as straight sections, then you know, that functionality is built in. So you wouldn't want to have to sort of recreate that, learn what's, what's built into the software. So it's loft. <clears throat> then we have uh, sweeps. So I'm going to create a line here. And I'm going to sweep a one sweep. Uh, so sweep one means there's one rail. It's going to take a curve, what they call a cross section curve. So first, I had that selected. So I'm going to type sweep, sweep one select the rail, so the rail along which something will be swept. So there's the rail, I select one, and then it wants cross-section curves, and I can select this as a rail curve. And you have that surface. Now this is obviously the same as extruding in that direction. So again, there's always many ways to make something. Uh, the, the typical value of a sweep. Um, and I'm going to put a construction plane on this curve, which we'll cover in a tutorial shortly. The typical uh, application for a sweep is some kind of cross-section curve here. Um, let me do this. So now I have different sort of profiles. Um, so a sweep one, this is the rail, and this is the profile. You'll see that it sweeps that, whatever I select, around that. Um, again, I could have swept the curve, the, the, the circle. Um, and if you have a different profile, you have the option <coughs> to change the sweep profile mid sweep. So sweep one, select this curve, select that cross section, and then this next cross section, and hit go. And it will, as it sweeps along that rail, morph between the two. So I'll add, I'm going to get rid of that circle for now. I'm going to add one more profile here. I'm drawing on this construction plan. I now have, I'm going to sweep along this rail, and it's going to morph between these shapes.
So that is sweep one. I'm going to go ahead down into properties and turn off the ISO curves, which are the internal curvature of the or in, internal rules or defining um, lines of the surface. And that's that sweep. Now a sweep two, if I have a um, two rails, and I'm going to isolate these and move this. A sweep two does a very similar um, operation as the sweep one, but it takes into account two rails. So it will morph the cross-section object to fit uh, sort of stretch and pull and push along those two rails. Again, this could have been created as a loft, but for example, if we wanted to create a circle or a closed, let's do this, I'll use a closed curve I now have this sort of eye there. If I were to do a sweep two between this rail and this rail and use this as the cross section curve, it now creates, well, this is a sort of crazy one, but um, it creates a, there we go, Let's try this. And this is pretty extreme here, so this sweep two, select this rail, this rail, and the cross section, and it's morphing that along those two curves. more appropriately, a two rail sweep allows you to create um, an object you wouldn't else be able to create with a loft. So sweep two, the two rails, and the cross section. There you go. So we have planar surface, extrude, sweep one, sweep two, and loft. Those are really the, the most commonly used um, commands <clears throat> or surface generation tools. We also have another we'll call, let me clean some of this up. I'll just leave this, uh, clean all this up. We have one called Revolve. So what Revolve does is basically the equivalent of using a lathe. Um, alt tab, make sure I hit there. Take this and type Revolve. And it wants the Revolve axis. So I'm going to click this to there. So basically along that, and you'll see if I click, it's um, revolving it around that central axis. Hitting U or full circle will just make a full revolve. Um, but this is any sort of item that is sort of created this way and there's many machined parts and, and details that call for this type of generation. Uh, the revolve can be very useful in specific applications. A network surface, the next type we'll talk about. Um, a network surface is using a, a network of, of curves. <clears throat> and let me make a few curve 
cameras here. So it's basically a hybrid of a lot of different types of processes, in a sense. So if I have a definition, you see here, of curves in one direction, and then sort of curves defined in another direction, a network service will figure out um, this sort of fit to accommodate that. So you're basically defining um, sort of the curves in space that you want to form the surface. So in this case, if I decided that I would like you know, a, a jump up here, um, and have that come through there, and do that, this will most more closely match the new curve I defined. Um, so that is a network surface. Um, so there's a lot of... <coughs> the curves don't have to be exactly on. Um, it will sort of approximate or tween them. Um, so you'll see that it'll basically take the average of sort of weighted points. So if I wanted this to be a straight line, at that exact moment, and do this in network surface, you'll see that it will bring that through. So it's a way of creating, adding curves where you want definition and letting it figure out sort of in between those um, the sort of construction elements. And the final type we'll cover now is sort of a similar concept as a as a, as a um, network surface, but it can handle multiple types of, of uh, curves. So if I were to take this, oops, so grab this curve, it can handle closed curves along with other curves. It's basically taking an average, it can handle points, it can handle a lot of different things, um, sort of encourage you to experiment with this, so I'm going to basically make a little basket here, and the curve command is called uh, patch curve, or patch surface, I'm sorry, and here you'll see in the preview, we've got some options. Um, stiffness, UV spans, how how tight it needs to be to the um, sort of original definition. But this is a very um, powerful and sort of flexible tool that you'll want to sort of experiment with. And that's the patch curve. Patch.